Okay, uh, this is like the third or fourth time I've tried to do this. I want to show you how to run Java programs from the command line, but it seems like when I open the command line, uh, it screws up the tool I'm using to record the video. So hopefully this will work. So uh, first let me talk a little bit about this. When you install Java on your machine, you install something called the Java Development Kit. The uh, Integrated Development Environment, IDE, that we use, NetBeans, is just one of many, and that actually works on top of the installed Java. So you can use NetBeans or Eclipse or one of the uh, kind of learning tools like Dr. Java. You don't, don't need to have an IDE. You can actually run the Java programs directly from the uh, command line. You could even create the Java code with a simple text editor. So uh, it's important to know how to do that. I'm going to show you that. And if everything works out, I'm going to show you how even though we don't know how to use files yet, we can leverage this command line to do things that we don't know how to do in our Java files. OK. OK, so this is a program that we wrote previously. It's called the Sentinel demo. And it showed you how to use a Sentinel value when you were getting a variety of input values from a user and you didn't know how many were going to be generated. And so the idea is that the user gives you some uh, Sentinel value to tell you when they're done doing the input. So the Sentinel value here is negative 1. And this program allows a teacher to enter uh, a bunch of grades from 0 to 100. There's no error checking, uh, range checking that is. And uh, actually, let's see, I don't think this program even has basic error checking, so it just assumes that you're going to enter things correctly. So that's okay for showing you how to run at the command line. And I've already done this program with you in a previous demo, so you should be okay. I'm just using NetBeans here to show you the program. So basically, we have a while loop. As long as the user doesn't enter the Sentinel, it keeps adding the grades. It counts how many grades are entered, and it keeps a running total of them. And then it calculates an average, which is the total divided by the number of grades, and it outputs it and ends. Okay? So let's go ahead and minimize that. And it's looking good. Uh, my video is still recording. So I've created a working directory here, and I've called that Java CMD. And I've got uh, my program there, just the Java file. That's the source code for the program. And so let's go ahead and see now if I can get the uh, command line to uh, open without closing my video off. So uh, I'm going to go to the Start menu and uh, type CMD. Okay, it looks like the video is still running. I thought that's where I had killed it, uh, but I am still recording. That's good. Okay, so I'm at the command line. Uh, the default directory when it opens is the uh, user directory, and so I want to change my directory. So I'm going to say cd space, and then double dot means go to the parent directory, or you could just say go up a directory. So I'm, this is going to take me to users. And then if I do this again, it'll take me to the C drive. And then from there, I'm going to do CD Java CMD. That takes me to my command drive. Uh, I'm sorry, my working directory where I have my Java programs. To show you that, I'll do the DIR, which is a shorthand for show me the directory listing. Notice I have a data file that we're going to look at in a moment and then the sentinel demo.java file and actually that's the same directory I'm looking at here in the Windows Explorer okay so it looks like we're going alright things are working and hopefully the video will continue to run okay so a couple of things first uh, to make sure that Java is working on the machine I'll type Java dash version and if this works, it should show me that Java is indeed on the machine. 
and it does. So it's showing me what version of Java I have. If that returned a uh, command not found or file not found error, that would indicate that Java wasn't uh, configured correctly on my machine. Basically what that is, is you have to have Java in your class path and path so when you're uh, working here in the command line, it can find Java to execute it. Uh, there's two other commands I want to use. The first one is just Java C. And I'll try that again without any parameters. So it should return some help, which it does. And then I can type Java, which is the command I use to actually run a program, a Java program, after it's compiled. And uh, again, I'm not calling any parameters. I'm really just making sure that it's going to work. And the way I can tell is I'm getting this help. OK, I'm going to clear my screen, CLS. And now I'm at my command prompt. I'm in my working directory. Here's how I compile a Java program. So I'll say Java C space in the name of the program. And in the command line, I can just type the first few letters, and then I can hit tab and it'll do what's called command completion and it'll provide the file name. So you can see that Java C space Sentinel demo dot Java will compile that uh, Java uh, file. And there we go. Now when it compiles, unless there's an error, it doesn't return anything. So if I want to check, I can use the up arrow to bring back my dir command and uh, so I don't have to type it. So you can basically remember the commands you used during this session. And now you'll see that I have this extra file here, which is the sentinel demo.class. So that's the bytecode file that the Java Virtual Machine actually runs. And when you run a program in, in uh, NetBeans, it compiles the .java file into the class file, and then it invokes the class file, and it captures the output. So that's what we do when we do an IDE. OK, so now I'm ready to run my program from the command line. And I'm going to do that with Java space and the name of the file. Again, I'll just type the first few characters and tap the tab. Now, when you run one of these files, the convention is not to show the extension, although I am actually running the class file. And uh, so now we're ready to go. And I'll hit Enter. And so enter the grade or negative 1 to quit. So you can see that the program is running. So I'm going to put five values in. So let's do 34, 45, 56, 78, uh, 89 and uh, we'll do a 100 and then to end I'll do the negative one so I'll go ahead and type that and you can see that the program just ran at the command line so I entered six grades and it gave me the average which was 67 okay if I wanted to run the program again I could just recall it and launch it and of course I'd have to enter the data a second time Okay, now uh, I want to try and show you an advanced feature. So it turns out that um, in the DOS command line, we can use an input symbol to redirect the input. So I have a file over here called data text, and I can actually display the file here in the command line with the type command. So it's type D, tab to complete, data text, and here's my data text file. So you can see that this is a series of grades, one per line, and the last line has the negative one. So what I want to do is I want to redirect the input into the Java program. So instead of reading it from the keyboard, it'll read it from the file. And uh, later on, you'll learn how to read files and write files directly from Java programs. Right now, I'm taking advantage of the operating system being able to do this. So the way I'm going to do this is I'm going to run my program, Java Sentinel Demo, but then I'm going to use the input redirect program, uh, prompt like this and the name of the file, which is data.txt. You can still see it on the screen. And so here we go. 
And so now you can see that uh, what's interesting is the output still goes to the console, but it is actually reading from the file. And if you come down here, you can see you entered 13 grades, the average is 76, zero, zero. So uh, look how this works. <clears throat> Enter the next grade or negative one to quit, and then it repeats that. So what's going on there is it's just um, taking the input from the file and the output is still going to the console. So here's my result. You entered 13 grades and the average is 76. So that's kind of cool. If I had this, it's quite reasonable that if a teacher had a, a column of grades in an Excel file, they could put it into a simple text file, a CSV file, and then I could read it like this. So uh, that's pretty cool. Okay, let's see where we're at on our time. 11 minutes. Uh, you know, I've been having some trouble with this, so I think I'm going to save this and then start another video where I'll try to show you an interesting trick that uses this technique. So I'm glad we were able to actually finally record the screen. I'm not sure why I was having an issue. Uh, maybe I was turning the video off when I was clicking over here to launch the uh, command line. So.